most tutorials will use some sort of image texture to create scratches along a surface. Scratches, roughness, and other sorts of imperfections actually create a sense of realism, so it's very important to incorporate within your scenes. However, in today's video, I wanted to procedurally create these scratches so that you have control over the angle of the scratches, the length of the scratches, the number of scratches, without having to depend on any external source. It's going to be a very simple and fun one. So let's actually begin this particular tutorial. In our default scene, we're going to go ahead and use our default cube itself along with the default material. So to set up the scene, all we're going to do is switch our viewport shading to rendered. We'll go to our render properties and we'll switch on bloom and screen space reflections so that we can actually see all of the changes that we make as we make them. Then to add in some more variation in the light, we'll just select this default light itself and move it around so that we place it in more desirable positions. So let's press G to grab it and just move it along the Y axis by pressing GY so that we get some sort of a front angle like this. Then we'll press Shift D to duplicate it so that we get some lighting at the bottom as well. And I think we need some lighting from the left. So we'll just press Shift D and move it over to the left like that as well. Now we could use the default cube, but to also show the material on other objects, I'll go ahead and press Shift A and add in Suzanne, which is the mesh monkey. We'll press GX to move it to the side and we'll press Control 3 to add in a subdivision surface of level 3 to Suzanne. Now we'll just zoom in, select Suzanne, right click and choose Shade Smooth. To give it the same material as our cube, we'll shift select the cube and press Ctrl L and choose Link Materials. Now, to actually mess around with the materials, we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window, and then we'll change this from the 3D viewport to the shader editor. To give ourselves some more space to work with, we'll tap N to remove that side panel. Now, the main effect can be done using object coordinates, but since we're normally using 3D objects and we do want it to be stretched along one specific axis, it's always best to use UV coordinates so that we can have similar amount of stretching along the entire 3D object. So we'll start off by using a noise texture by pressing Shift A and searching for a noise texture. But since we want to use UV coordinates, we'll go ahead and add in a mapping node as well as a texture coordinate node. Now, if you have Node Wrangler enabled, instead of searching for the mapping and texture coordinate nodes, you can just select the noise texture and then press Ctrl T to get the mapping and texture coordinate nodes. However, we're going to connect the UV to the vector and the output from the mapping node into the noise texture. And to actually see what the output of the noise texture is looking like, with Node Wrangler enabled, we can just Control Shift click it. Again, if you don't have Node Wrangler enabled, you can just connect the factor to the material output directly. Now you can see we are getting some variation in the light and dark regions of the noise texture. However, we don't want it to be 3D. We just want these to be one dimensional lines. So we can switch this from 3D to 1D and we'll use just the X coordinate of the mapping node as the W socket. So let's search for a separate XYZ node and then take this vector, plug it into the separate XYZ and take this X value and plug it into the W socket. Now, if we actually look at the texture, we can see what it looks like. Let's start increasing the scale and this is what we have. Now you can always increase the contrast by using a color ramp node. So let's search for a color ramp node, plug that in right here and we'll just bring this in to increase the contrast a bit more. Now this is going to act as the basis for our scratches and you'll notice that if you change the rotation about the Z value, you can actually change the angle of the scratches on all of the faces. So that's going to be very useful when you want to determine which angle the scratches are going to be coming in from. Now, of course, we wouldn't want it to just be long straight scratches like this. We want slight scratches to be present in some areas and not present in others. The way we do that is by masking these lines out using some other texture. So for this, we're going to use another very organic texture, which is the Musgrave texture. So let's search for the Musgrave texture and we'll switch this from 3D to 2D and we'll take the mapping output from here and plug that into the vector. Now to actually take a look at what the Musgrave texture looks like, we'll select it and Control Shift click to actually preview it. Now I do want this to have much more detail, especially around the edges. So let's go ahead and increase the detail to maybe something like 10 and we'll just reduce the dimension down to something very close to zero. Let's go with the dimension value of 0.2. And I think that gives a really good roughness for this texture. And now to actually mix these two together, we're going to use a mix color node. So let's search for that. And we have to plug that in after the color ramp. Let's give ourselves some more space to work by taking these two nodes and shifting them over to the side. And then we can plug this output from the Musgrave texture as socket B and this output from the color ramp as socket A. And we essentially want to darken this wherever this area is black. So let's go ahead and change this from mix to darken and increase the factor all the way to one. And to preview it, just control shift click the mix color node. Now, of course, this is not exactly the effect that we were looking for. 
So we need to go ahead and start increasing the areas that's black for this Musgrave texture. We can do that with another color amp node. So let's take this shift D to duplicate it, plug it in right here. And now just bring that black in and maybe just increase the scale on the noise texture as well. And also scale up the Musgrave texture till we get exactly what we want. So as you can see, even with a scale of 28, we have far more white regions for the scratches, whereas we want the scratches to only be present in smaller increments. So what we'll do is instead of having this color ramp as black to white, we'll switch it from white to black. And instantly you can see how it looks more like scratches. If we just bring it in to something like this, and we can always just increase the scale and maybe we'll reduce the scale over here up to something like five or 15. And I think that looks good enough for the noise texture. I'll also just increase the roughness a bit and I'll increase the detail all the way to 15 for the noise texture. I'll also increase the roughness quite a bit. Maybe we'll go up to a value of 0.9. And I think that looks like good scratches on the surface. Of course, you can always play around with the amount of scratches that's visible by increasing or decreasing this slider, as well as playing around with the scale of the Musgrave texture. So I think a value of 20 is good enough. And this looks like the scratches that I was looking for. However, there's a lot more that's left to be done. The first thing is that this scratch that we created has to become the actual bump as well as roughness for the principal to PSDF. And we also want some more scratches to come in the opposite direction. So what we're going to do is create the scratches in the other directions first by going ahead and taking the mapping node and duplicating all of these by selecting them and then pressing control shift D to duplicate it and simply rotating this mapping node by quite a bit and mixing these two together as well. So let's mix these together by using a mix color node and we're going to keep it at mix with a factor of 0.5 and just plug these in to their respective sockets. Now, if we control shift click this, we won't be able to see the scratches in the other direction because we're currently using the exact same texture coordinates. So apart from just changing the rotation, we can play around with the location as well so that you can clearly see how we have one set of scratches going in one direction and we have another set that's going in a slightly different angle. We can play around with that angle. We can make it exactly 90 degrees as well. It's completely up to you and your requirements. So if we have a 90 degrees offset, this is what it'll look like. And you might have situations where this 90 degrees offset is exactly what you need, but I want to be able to control this angle based on the actual scene, which I'm rendering out. So I'm going to keep it at an arbitrary angle like this for now. Next, let's go ahead and give it the actual bump by pressing shift A and searching for a bump node. And then let's move this principal PSDF and the material output a bit more to the side. Take this result, plug it into the height and then take this normal and plug it into the normal. Then to actually preview this particular material, let's control shift click the principal PSDF and see what we have. Now you can actually see the little bit of bump that's occurring because of all of the lights that we have present in our scene. However, right now it seems like the bump is going outward. If you do have a scratch in a material, it won't be bumping outward. It will be bumping inward. So we have to invert the bump node. So let's just go to our bump node and check this little invert box. Now it does look like these scratches are going into the surface, which is exactly what I wanted. And I think this looks absolutely great. If you feel like the scratches are too deep, you can always play around with this strength, maybe reduce it to something like 0.3 and you'll get much milder scratches, which might be desirable for your scene. Since this is just a tutorial, I want you to be able to see the scratches as well as I can. So I'm going to keep it at a value of something like 0.8 or maybe 0.7 itself. Now these scratches are to be added to a metallic surface. So let's go ahead and increase the metallic value all the way to one. And along with that, areas that have been scratched would generally have more roughness. So we're going to have to use this output to also control the roughness value of the metal. So let's search for a color ramp node. And remember, black values imply shinier and whiter values imply it's rougher. If we were to look at the output from this scratch, we do have black as the actual material and white as the scratches, which means if we were to directly plug this in over here and take this as the roughness of the principal PSDF, we would have the scratched areas as completely rough and the rest as a shiny metal. However, I don't want the shiny areas to have a roughness of zero because you can clearly see how the specular reflections are way too sharp. So to give it some amount of roughness, I'm just going to bring this in a bit, bring this in as well. And I'm going to take this and change it from a value of zero to a value of maybe 0.3. And even this white, instead of having a value of one, I'll maybe make it a value of 0.6. And I think that looks much better for the actual base color. We can change this to whatever color we want. Maybe we can just give it a slightly more goldish look so that it looks like a brushed gold or maybe a slightly copper color like that, or maybe just any 
type of metal, or we can keep the saturation at zero itself and darken it to give it a dark metal look. So it's completely up to you as to how you want your metal to look, but I think I'm going to increase the roughness value of this from 0.3 to maybe 0.4 so that it looks just like this. Now that we have this, the problem is that most metals won't be perfectly smooth, especially if it is roughened up this much. So we need to add in another layer of roughness or surface imperfections. For that, we're simply going to use a noise texture. So let's go ahead and press Shift A to search for a noise texture. And let's connect that up to any one of these mapping nodes. Or you can directly use the normal UV coordinates and give it its own mapping node so that you can have control over it separately. So let's just press Shift A and search for the mapping node and take the UV, plug it into the vector and take this vector output and plug it into the input of the noise texture. Now, again, for better control, let's take this color ramp, press Shift D to duplicate it, take the color and plug it into the factor. Now, again, because we're just using UVs, we don't need it to be in three dimensions. Let's change it to 2D so that it evaluates much faster. Now let's just preview this by control shift clicking the color ramp and then let's bring this slider in so that we get some nice looking noise. And of course, let's increase the detail up to maybe something like eight and increase the roughness to maybe 0.9 as well. And I think this looks much better. Now we're going to be using this as both roughness as well as bump. And I don't want it to be this sharp. So let's reduce the contrast by taking this black and changing it from a value of zero to maybe a value of 0.4. And we can keep this white at a value of 0.9. Now let's go ahead and mix this in with the original roughness that we had over here. We can do that by duplicating this mix node, plugging it in right there, and then taking this output and plugging it into socket B. Now, once we have that, let's control shift click the principled BSDF to see what we have. And now you can see that little variation on the surface as well. But I do want this variation to have its own bump. So let's duplicate this bump node by pressing shift D and plugging that in right here. Make sure the normal goes into the normal. And for the height, we're going to be using the output from here. Of course, once you plug this in, the strength might be a bit too high. So you can go ahead and just reduce the strength to something like 0.02. And I think that's gonna look a lot better. So that's actually all you have to do to create this really grungy scratched up metal material that you can apply to any object. Now remember, when you have an object that has all these different curves, they're going to be using UV coordinates that might have seams. So you can see there's clearly a seam over here and the textures don't exactly line up. Now, in most situations, this won't be too noticeable, but in case you're having situations where the seam is clearly visible in your look, you can always change the way the UVs are projected by going into edit mode by pressing tab and then projecting it in a different method. So you can change the UV projections by pressing U and choosing any one of these options. If you don't want a seam, to be present in one specific direction, you can actually go into your top view and press U and choose project from view. By doing that, there will not be any seam in that view. However, the problem with doing this is that it does get stretched out on the other axes. As you can see, it's getting stretched over here. So it's really up to your use case and what's necessary for you. So you could use any one of these. And in most situations, I use cube project. So when you use cube project, the size of the scratches will remain roughly equal no matter which direction you look at it from, which is what I think is necessary for situations like this. If you were to use one of the other projection styles, such as maybe your cylinder projection, you can see how the scratches do get stretched out in one specific direction and not really that stretched on the other directions. So that's why make sure you use the correct type of projection. And in most situations, Q projection will work for this particular effect. And Lastly, in case you want to change the scale for the scratches altogether, I think it's best to use some sort of a value node that you can control the overall scale for everything together with. So let's just plug this value into the scale of all of the different mapping nodes and then change this value to whatever value you think is necessary. So let's start off with a value of two and you can see that how increasing this actual value is going to slowly increase the scale of the scratches, which means you're gonna get much smaller scratches present on your surface. If you start reducing this value, you'll get much larger scratches. So maybe a value of 0.2 will create these large scratches just like that. Apart from that, you can always adjust the different noise textures to get the desired look based on your requirements. And you could have a separate value to control that as well. The Musgrave textures could be controlled with one single value and the noise textures could be controlled with another value so that you have all of the different controls right at your fingertips.
So feel free to play around with all of these different values to get the exact type of scratches that you want. And remember, you can always add in even more of these particular nodes to create other angles as well. In fact, you could convert this into a subgroup and just have them mixed together to create as many different directions as you require. However, in most situations, two directions is good enough. So I'm gonna leave it just like this. And with that, if you're happy with the way your material looks, you can always save the material as an asset by renaming it to maybe scratched metal and then saving this as an asset by choosing mark as asset after you right click the name of the material. That way you'll be able to use it in any of your future videos. And if you don't know much about the asset browser, check out this video over here where I explain why you should be using the asset browser if you don't already use it and how to use the asset browser. Thank you so much for watching this far into the video. If you enjoyed it, do let me know in the comments. I definitely would like to respond to all comments for as long as I possibly can. I post videos every single day, so check out other videos on my channel because there's definitely something or the other that's just waiting to be discovered by you. Until my next video comes out tomorrow, keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.